Hey there and welcome to another episode of Enterama. Today we're going to be working again on the international sector, that uh, whole area of the park that's, uh, well, that you're looking at right now. As you can see, we left off with a few things uh, undetailed and uh, we're just going to start, uh, well, pretty much adding detail throughout this area. And uh, as you can guess from the title of this video and maybe the thumbnail if I was able to change it in time, uh, we're also going to be putting uh, a big foot court in uh, sort of the main courtyard of this uh, of this park but uh, we'll get to that uh, in just a moment first off we're going to be adding a few rocks to sort of complete this um, this little pond that's just sitting under the the train tracks and uh, I really don't didn't want to go crazy with the rocks just wanted to add a few props here and there in uh, in between the gaps uh, from all the uh, foliage and vegetation we put down in uh, the previous video so I think it uh, it came out great, and uh, we should probably talk about a few things uh, in general about uh, you know th this project and you know what the future holds because I don't know if I actually uh, sort of touch on a few of the ideas that I have. Uh, first off, um, I want to try to get this um, this project uh, or at least uh, the international sector wrapped in the next episode. I thought it was going to be a little bit quicker in terms of uh, detailing, but I got uh, carried away a little bit on this one. Uh, we're gonna be expanding just a little bit, but uh, detailing it, uh, I thought it was gonna come much, much easier and it didn't. So I'd rather not rush it, get it nice uh, nice and, 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 and pretty. And uh, hopefully after that, uh, I mean, as, as, as we progress through the series, we're going to be reusing some of the same, you know, design patterns and, and styles. So uh, I'm assuming it's going to be slightly easier uh, as, you know, like, for example, uh, later on, we're going to be creating a burger shop and uh, the style for the burger shop will probably be reused a couple times uh, throughout the park. So hopefully that will make things easier. In fact, here's a good example right here on the time lapse. I grabbed uh, one of the, uh, well, the building that houses the info kiosks. And uh, obviously I'm replacing the info kiosks with uh, a bathroom and uh, what, what is it called? The infirmary? Whatever the health facility is, I can't remember the name. Uh, I do apologize for that. But uh, I'm reusing the same architecture and I'm going to be using uh, or reusing those uh, elements uh, over and over again uh, throughout, uh, you know, the rest of the, of the park build. And... Um, so uh, the more that we uh, expand and the more we progress or make progress, the easier we'll get. Uh, right here, for example, I'm putting down the first ride, which I'm not going to open in this episode. Uh, we will have a lot of people just walking about uh, the park simply because I put down this, uh, you know, the restrooms and, uh, you know, the health facility. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think I'm just going to call it that, the health facility. Uh, so that uh that uh helps you know start spreading out and seeing people you're gonna see at the cinematics at the end it's just gonna be kind of uh fascinating actually just actually seeing people for the first time walk around the park it's uh at least it's pretty exciting for me um uh, my point is here on this uh, first ride we're also gonna have our first kind of mini building entrance type dealio, which is what I'm working on right now. And if you remember from uh, the first episode, I mentioned that I wanted to keep sort of the architecture really, really simple and uh, not have like super flashy colors and signs like you would maybe see in other parks like Disney or Universal or Six Flags or, you know, you name it. Uh, this uh, park was owned by the government pretty much throughout its history. Uh, it didn't used to be like that, actually. Um, so let me give you a quick background uh, on how this park actually came to be. So uh, in the early 1980s, the in Argentina, there was a, a military government uh, who, I mean, among other terrible things, it was, you know, pretty corrupt. Uh, and um, they, uh, they wanted to, and they weren't doing very well uh, at the time. So in terms of popularity and power, so they they try to hide some of this uh, flaws by you know creating this like crazy utopic builds. And this park, I mean, the plans, the original plans for this park were huge. It was one of the biggest ones in the world, uh, definitely the biggest one in Latin America when it was built. So they hired this company that was called Interama. Uh, I think it was like 1981, and uh, the park opened in '82, and uh, the company went under shortly after. 
uh, for reasons that I can't remember, but I'll try to find that for the next episode. Uh, the thing is, the government took over, and uh, basically they owned the park administration ever since, so it was always pretty much, you know, government owned. And uh, that means that one, I mean, typical government, in typical government fashion, I guess is what I'll try to say, at least in Argentina, uh, maintenance is not their strong suit. So as rights were, you know, going down for maintenance, most of them wouldn't be reopened uh, again, ever. So you'll end up with uh, a ton of abandoned rights. Uh, even if you go on Google Maps, you you'll st can still see them today. Uh, Right now, I think they're tearing it down uh, for the uh, Olympic Village. I know I mentioned this before, but uh, the uh, satellite imagery from Google Maps is still showing uh, where some of the rights used to be. And it's actually kind of sad to see it that way. I mean, this uh, the theme for this theme park uh, throughout its history was mostly corruption, unfortunately. Uh, I don't want to get too much into politics. Uh, the military government at the time was uh, pretty corrupt and, I mean, the corruption scandals behind this park, uh, it's been said that some of the shareholders from the company Interama were actually, you know, had close ties to the officials back then. Uh, the military government did some like really terrible things. This was like nothing uh, compared to what they actually did. Again, I don't want to go into that route because I can, it's, it's a pretty dark history of the country. Uh, however, what I do want to point out is that given all those, you know, issues or the bumpy road that uh, this park had to go through during its history, it still was operational for multiple years, and it was a pretty decent park. Uh, most of it, uh, it's uh, gardens, as, uh, as you'll see as we start detailing and, and creating more areas of the park, but um, the rides uh, themselves were pretty amazing, and uh, just mind you, people didn't used to travel so much uh, back in the 80s. It was really expensive to go visit Disney or, you know, parks like that. Uh, so this was the closest thing that they would ever see and it was like, you know, like international quality type of park in many respects. Maybe the ambiance wasn't amazing, uh, it wasn't as colorful as other parks, but uh, at least you got some rides that were like, you know, top notch. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can do a good enough homage to, to that during uh, this series. Uh, talking about what I'm building on uh, the time lapse right now, by the way, is I'm just adding a few little details here and there, just so that um, so that this area doesn't look so barren. Because uh, I didn't have time to actually go in and, and you know add a, a crazy amount of details, but I did want to create a, a, an entrance that I could replicate and reuse in multiple areas. I later realized that um, it was a little bit too rustic uh, that sign that I put down, so I, I wanted to sort of go with something a bit more flashy. And uh, in this episode, later on, you're gonna see, I mean, I'm starting it with, I'm starting with this right now, what I'm gonna, with what I'm about to say. Wow, I'm talking way too fast. Um, but as you can see, I'm setting up the color theme to be yellow, pink, and uh, orange. And uh, once we get to the foot court, you're gonna see how all that ties in uh, together. That That's actually the theme of uh, the theme park in terms of uh, color and uh, you know, a little bit of ambiance as well. Uh, but uh, right here, I'm just uh, using some of these uh, props to sort of hide the imperfections and uh, so, sort of, you know, a few of the joints that uh, where uh, some of the textures meet. Uh, they're not uh, super crazy detail, as you can see. It's just brick, red bricks and some concrete uh, structures and uh, the two pointy roofs and I'm sure that has an A but I can't uh, and I know I think I know it but I can't remember right now uh, in any case uh, I decided to change that wooden sign with something a bit more flashy and something that sort of matches the theme a little bit better and obviously here I grabbed some of those um, you know green sort of hedgy planters that I had uh, in the main entrance of the park and I'm gonna be trying to replicate that uh, pattern in other areas especially around here now I'm not sure I absolutely love how this came out uh, I, I think it's okay it's definitely better than nothing at all but I may uh, revisit this uh, you know with fresh eyes I've been uh, I've been playing uh, or recording this episode for multiple hours this is I think by far the longest uh, recording session I, I've ever done for Planet Coaster. It took me several days to put the, together this video, um, in part because I I was uh, kind of blanking on uh, 
what exactly I wanted to build and how exactly, you know, some of these buildings were positioned amongst each other. But uh, at the end, once I started putting together, you know, the foot court and all that, it sort of came together uh, and, you know, I was a little bit more inspired by, uh, by then. So uh, that got me a little bit more excited and, and try to even push uh, further. That's why uh, I, I, I really wanted to make more progress because uh, I felt like, oh, OK, I mean, this took me a long time, but you really can't see a whole lot, especially because the first part of this video was just adding rocks. Uh, and, and details uh, in, in multiple places. Which, by the way, I forgot to mention, uh, those, you, you probably wonder uh, what those random like blocks I put down on the water. <laughs> you can rewind the video and, and, and check it out, but uh, you probably wonder what the hell that was. And um, so, if you look at um, on Google Maps, and I have, I have you know some reference photos of the same area, it, uh, it has, uh, there's obviously like uh, a terrain high difference uh, between uh, that little stretch of river that you see on the left of the screen. Right now you can't see it anymore, but um, that segment right there, it's uh, a little bit higher than the rest of the pond. And basically they they put down this uh, concrete blocks that sort of create a bit of a current that adds air to, uh, to the pond itself so that wildlife can actually live. You can actually see it on, on the right on the screen and now you can't <laughs> anymore. I'm going way too quickly with this uh, belt. Uh, in any case, I just thought it was a nice touch and I put the uh, little steam effect um, sort of plugins and uh, I don't know, I just thought it came out kind of nicely so I decided to put it. It's just like one extra level of detail uh, that you know brings everything together. Now, talking about what I'm doing here is I'm creating the first uh, foot type building and I, I, I struggled with this uh, a little bit at first because I uh, well for multiple reasons you're gonna see how many times I changed this uh, building uh, the overall shape will remain the same but uh, it looked a little bit too plain I mean even for a for, you know for a government owned park it was a little bit too plain so I decided to uh, add a few more details and I specifically had issues trying to cover those uh, corners you kind of have to offset some of these wooden planks but they don't quite meet at the end uh, in a nice uh, fashion so there's like a you know like a bit of a jagged edge that um, you know somehow I had to cover it with uh, other materials so you're gonna see uh, me do that in just a second grab one of these uh, wooden poles and uh, sort of rotate it at a 45 degree angle uh, and then another 45 degree angles so that it would uh, sort of cover that uh, imperfection. And I thought it looked nice, but it wasn't great. And uh, I later sort of adjusted it a little bit. And uh, at the same time, the whole roof wasn't like, or you know, the whole building wasn't like super detailed. So I decided to also change that later on. You're gonna see it in a moment. Uh, oh, exactly, this is exactly what I was talking about. So. Uh, those, uh, you know, those segments of roof were a bit too plain, so I decided to add a bit of color to it. And this is actually pretty similar to some of the buildings that they used to have uh, in uh, pretty much the exact same spot. These buildings were 100% like a desaturated dark military green. So yeah, it's not like a terrible, I picked that terrible color uh, because I wanted to. I, I, I picked those because that's what they used to look like. Uh, they're not terrible, I don't think, but uh, they're not very theme parky. I mean, they totally look like the type of uh, you know buildings that you would see, like a, like a kiosk that you would see in like you know like a town square or something like that. But not necessarily a theme park. And uh, obviously, adding a few of these uh, props with uh, you know the little container in the back and the air conditioning units to sort of bring everything together. At first, I wanted to sort of spread out some of these buildings uh, so that, uh, I don't know, that it would occupy a little bit more area in, in the gaps. But uh, I decided to stay a little bit true to the original design, so I eventually moved them closer to the water fountain, especially because this was a weird curve and I wanted people to sort of walk around an area with uh, tables and umbrellas and things, which by the way, it was uh, really crazy to realize that there are no umbrellas. In this game, so I had to make my own. We'll get to that in just a moment. I'm getting ahead of myself, but uh, oh, that that little design, little detail there. I thought it was quite fitting uh, with the little 
a pipe coming out with uh, uh, just a tiny bit of smoke, I think really sells the idea that this is just a burger joint over there. And as you can see here, this is where I'm, I'm actually gonna be end up moving the uh, this restaurant to their final location. Uh, we're gonna be covering this with uh, concrete uh, blocks uh, at some point in, uh, in the next couple of minutes. But uh, I was trying to like sort of position these elements so that they would be you know perfectly parallel to that angle road that kind of stretches to the side and I basically duplicated this the exact same building but obviously replaced the facility in the middle so on the one side we have the burger chief and on the other side we have the, the milkshake stand that I can I think it was cosmic cow I don't know if they changed the name between the alpha versions of the game and this one but uh, I don't know I thought it looked kind of nice obviously I removed the chimney because uh, I mean milkshakes I don't think need like a grill maybe i mean depending on what kind of milkshake you'll you'll be drinking but uh, uh, in my experience milkshakes uh, don't require any fire uh, devices uh, to be made so i decided to you know remove that and and also you know that sort of avoids uh, repetition to some degree so now what i'm doing here is uh creating the tables for the uh for this little foot court. And I started with something simple, like, you know, like some planks, some wooden planks, and uh, just a, a big square table using uh, the basic shapes. Uh, by the way, there I was just putting down one of these like animatronic uh, things, just so that I, I can see if the uh, scale of this uh, table was, you know, right. Cause uh, I, I thought it was a little bit too big, but once I put down, you know, one of those like cowboys next to it, it, uh, you know, it made sense and it looked nice. Uh, but I did realize that uh, these tables were a little bit too big in general. And if I wanted to fit a few uh, in, you know, that tight space where the, uh, the two foot shops are, uh, I, I wouldn't be able to fit so many. And also it, it looked more like the type of, uh, of tables that you would see in like a, in a park uh, and not a theme park per se but like a like a nature kind of park so i decided to to go for like a different design as you can see here i'm putting down a few of them uh in very symmetric fashion would also doesn't help sell that uh, you know design concept and uh, once you put down the uh concrete blocks you just end up with this empty gap in the middle that sure people are going to be work walking through that but it's just it still doesn't look very realistic and I really wanted to sort of cover the path. I didn't want to leave the path like that and have people walk on the grass because that would just be gross. Uh, eventually the grass will be all like dead and uh, not very realistic. I know I can use, you know, the brushes to sort of ruin the grass a little bit. And I am going to, there's going to be a lot of detailing involving uh, just landscaping. Uh, in fact, in the next episode, I'm going to be putting uh, or continuing the hill that you see in the back of, of the train, uh, but moving, you know, behind this uh, this restaurant, so it may it, it's gonna make sense, uh, more sense, I guess, once I get to that. But in the meantime, I just decided to go for a uh, more metal-looking uh, type of uh, table structure, and obviously more colorful. So this is where I start introducing the uh, the theme colors. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna be using red, pink, and orange, and I'm just sort of creating benches uh, out of this. Uh, out of these shapes. Uh, they're white uh, and red on the bottom. And uh, I think I even changed the shading of uh, the table uh, to be slightly different from the chairs themselves. And yeah, there you go. So, you know, just to create a little bit of contrast between the different elements. And now all I'm doing here is just like duplicating the same model over and over again. Uh, I'm using the uh, that technique of grouping things into buildings. Like I, I think I mentioned that in the previous episode. Uh, I've been l told in the comments that there's other ways to doing that. Uh, I mean, obviously the, the easiest one would be to use a uh, blueprint, but to be honest, I haven't given it a lot of uh, time to play around with that feature. Uh, for now, uh, grouping things into buildings works for me. I think I'm gonna stick to that for the foreseeable future. I'm not planning on publishing any of these uh, things in the in the workshop. I think they're pretty easy to build and they actually take more time if I have to go to, through the motions of uploading stuff to the Steam Workshop. Uh, I really wish there was custom content. I know I said it before. Uh, I don't know if that will ever be a thing for Planet Coaster. 
But uh, I mean, right here, for example, uh, and I know I mentioned this at the beginning of the episode, but I can't believe there isn't a umbrella asset that I could put down. So uh, what, what you see me do here is trying to fill the gaps uh, between the triangles with different shapes, but getting the angles right is just, it's so difficult. There's so many angles at play here that uh, what I ended up doing is basically rotating that uh, that triangle cross in and of itself uh, one time and basically changing the shade of color uh, of some of those triangles. So in total, you have eight triangles, four of them white and four of them uh, red in this case. Uh, and even once I, I was done with that, I was trying to like see if I could magically sort of fill the gaps uh, between those like spiky points. Obviously, uh, I wasn't able to do that. So I just uh, decided to leave it like that. And it's, uh, you know, it's not such a big deal. I don't think I, I kind of like how they look. Some of these uh, umbrellas are actually not made out of fabric. They're actually like plastic molding. So it, it's not completely unrealistic that they're pointy like that. Uh, however, my main goal here was to like have the aesthetic of a foot court for the most part. And since we're going to be looking at this uh, construction from up above, I thought it was, you know, good enough. Uh, and what you see me do here is basically fill in the gaps around this uh, two buildings as well as all these uh, tables and sort of define an area for the foot court. And also, you know, help blend in the paths that connect to uh, those uh, two shops. And part of that is also fencing the area a little bit. So again, I'm using this uh, hedge styling uh, technique, which uh, like I said before, I'm not 100% sure I love how it looks in this particular case. I absolutely adore how it looks in like the middle fountain and like the main entrance uh, path, don't get me wrong. But um, uh, the odd shapes, uh, like these like weird triangles that I'm working on right now is what I don't, uh, I'm not 100% sure if I love. Uh, maybe it's because I, I didn't have time to actually finish it. Uh, you, you'll see that uh, that uh, hedge just ends there. Uh, I really couldn't add much more detail on that uh, given the time that I had. But maybe uh, next episode, once I do finalize this whole area and add the, the remaining details, we can actually wrap it up and, and you know, bring it to a good spot that actually looks nice. Uh, over here, since this was more of a focal point of the area, I just wanted to add uh, a few of these uh, railings uh, with the same pattern that we've been using ever since uh, the first episode. Uh, and obviously those uh, little pillars with the lights uh, that uh, will pretty much light up the whole area at night. Actually, talking about lining, um, I also didn't have time to do that. So there are some lights uh, around this area. It's not 100% dark at night. However, uh, we still have to come back and add a few lights because it's it's not great. Uh, we could have a few, you know, cool, interesting spotlights that maybe help uh, this area, you know, pop a little bit more. And uh, finally, I wasn't planning on doing this for this episode, but I just, I just had to do it. Uh, create a larger version of the same uh, type of building, or at least the same aesthetic, because it's actually not going to be the same uh, roof. Uh, I decided to create three shops or put together three shops and uh, obviously keep the same uh, design for the walls and the same design for those like little, uh, you know, I don't know what you call it because they're not windows, but like those triangles kind of sticking out. And I know there's a better name for that, but uh, I wanted to sort of, you know, create a larger version of the building, which actually does exist uh, in the real life uh, park. But uh, I needed to change the roofing, uh, especially because it's a pain in the butt to actually uh, do anything uh, or, you know, selecting so many different props that are all like grouped into each other. It's really, really hard. So I just decided to go for like a uh, two slope roof. And uh, obviously it's all green. Uh, this like military desaturated green. Uh, that's kind of the theme here. But uh, the key difference here would be that I'm using uh, red uh, for the accent color uh, in this, uh, you know, exposed areas. And obviously I'm still using the uh, wooden poles to sort of bring in together uh, and cover some of the seams uh, between the different textures. You don't want to have like a, just a flat texture that doesn't, you know, that doesn't really blend in with the one next to it. So usually adding these, uh, these elements helps, you know, create like a, a flow uh, between uh, between your different textures and elements that uh, I think looks actually kind of nice. 
So I just went for that. I, I later realized that I wanted uh, a third window in the middle and not just like a gap uh, there so that they would match the uh, facilities uh, down below. You're gonna see in a moment uh, when I cut the, there you go. So now we have the three little extrusions or windows or what you might call it uh, at the top and they all match uh, you know the different facilities below now all that's left to do is just add a few paths connect uh, the different um the different shops and uh, obviously in this case since it was a bigger building i, I created three entrance points that uh, would hopefully bring everything together much uh, nicely and uh, obviously just filling every single gap with uh, you know the little tables and umbrellas and things which, uh, you know, sort of, will sort of complete this uh, little foot uh, cord. And it's not going to be the only one. We're going to have a few more of these uh, spread throughout the park. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for this time lapse. I'm just going to uh, be quiet for a few moments, let you enjoy the last few seconds of uh, music. And I'll resume in just a second. But unfortunately, I'm running out of time and things to say or things to show you. So I'm just going to let you enjoy some gorgeous cinematics of some of the features that we built during uh, this video. And uh, if you enjoy them, please consider giving this video a like. That's very much appreciated. Uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, there's a big red subscribe button underneath that you can click in order to be you know, notified the next time uh, one of these videos comes out. Uh, there's also a link in the description to the full playlist in case you might have missed one of the previous episodes. And you know, future episodes will be added there as well. Finally, I recently put together a more comprehensive list of the equipment that I use to put together this video. So if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description to my website where you can see all of my PC specs and my recording gear if you're interested uh, to see what I use. But that's pretty much it. That's all that I have to say for now. I want to thank you all for watching and hope to see you in the next one.